Hey guys, it's Will here and welcome back to the channel. As you can see, we're just setting up for another battle report. Got my Scythes of the Emperor um, and Sam is bringing his Orcs. So uh, yeah, we've got the new Space Marine Codex, so I'll be using this and also the Ultramarine Supplement as the Scythes of the Emperor are an Ultramarine successor. And this is going to be my first time running Marines in the new book, so I'm uh, going to be interested in to see how they do. I know my list isn't optimal, there's lots of new stuff I want to add or stuff that got buffed in this edition. So uh, any suggestions on what you think I should add to my army, then please uh, uh, leave your suggestions in the comments. So let, let's break down this army anyway. I've got a, um, a battalion and a vanguard. So leading the force is my warlord, he's a uh, captain in Gravis armour. Um, so that's the standard loadout there. And his warlord trait is going to be Adept of the Codex, so I can get those extra CP. Because, uh, yeah, those CP are really worth something now with the new marine stratagems. And accompanying him, I've got a Primaris Lieutenant with a Power Sword. That, uh, those two are leading my, uh, my battalion. And then in my Vanguard, that's being led by my Librarian. Um, I originally converted this guy up to represent Tigerius, but then before I actually got to use him, Tigerius went Primaris, so this guy is just a regular Librarian now. And he's going to have Might of Heroes and Null Zone for his powers. Um, I think for the list I've got at the moment, those are going to be more useful to me than the Ultramarine powers, but I certainly won't give them a try at some point. Form troops, got one squad of six scouts. Originally planned to run two squads of five, but when I went to uh, pop the models in the case today, um, one of my scouts from the second squad has evidently mastered the art of sneakiness and stealthiness, because I couldn't find him anywhere, so I had to read the list. So just the one unit there, then two units of intercessors, both packing bolt rifles and a grenade launcher, and this one, the sergeant, has a power sword as well. From heavy supports, got a unit of hellblasters, ten of them, and over here a unit of devastators, there's four missile launchers there, as well as a couple of uh, regular guys to uh, bulk out the squad size. Um, and then fast attack, I've uh, got five um, Inceptors, and from the flyer I've got a, uh, oh what is that thing called, Storm Talon, so I've got the Typhoon Missile Launchers on there. In the, um, oh and I have one elite choice that's going to be in the battalion, and that is this one, the uh, Primaris Ancient, and he's got the Standard of the Emperor Ascendant. So get me extra three inches on the range there, and also uh, the leadership buff. And the other three elites to make the vanguard got the Primaris Apothecary, Venerable Dreadnought with Laz Cannon and Missile Launcher, and then a Redemptor Dreadnought in the full DACA loadout. So uh, yeah, after playing Orcs for a while, this feels like a really compact army. So uh, hopefully um, I'm going to be able to make the most of the new tricks that Space Marines have got. As I said, running Ultramarine Chapter Tactics uh, with the Ultramarine Codex, so we'll get the benefits of uh, uh, Science of Gilliman and all that good stuff. But uh, yeah, that's them. Let's take a look at Sam's Orcs. And here's Sam's Bad Moons. So we've got 2,000 points, um, single Orc clan, two battalions. So for his four characters, four HQs, got a uh, big mech in Mega Armor with a custom force field. Big mech with a shock attack gun, that's going to be the souped up shocker, so he's going to be in a Dreadwar battalion, um, but that's only going to really benefit him, but that's fine, the souped up shock is a good relic. Then we've got a uh, war boss, he's the warlord, um, just the basic with a big chopper and a, um, a big sh uh, custom shooter there, and he's going to be running follow me lads as his warlord trait to give him additional three inches on his aura abilities, and then a weird boy who no doubt will have the jump. Then going over here, so we've got six troops units, three mobs of 30 shooter boys. All of those have knobs with um, power claws and three big shooters in every mob. And then we've got three mobs of 10 grots, mainly for the CP and a little bit of shielding. Two tank buster units, 10 in each, uh, both riding in trucks. Um, are the wrecking balls on there actually paid for? Uh, no. No, the wrecking balls aren't paid for, but that's how the model comes. And he's got 10 looters. And then two mega track scrap jets to finish the army. So uh, very um, sort of what you'd expect for a competitive bad moon force. You've got repetition. You've got all the best units there, really. It's uh, 
going to be tough, but if there's one thing the new Marine book can do, it's cull infantry. So this uh, should make for an interesting game. Uh, we're going to do Eternal War. Haven't rolled for a mission yet, but uh, yeah, we'll be back in a minute to show you the setup. All right, so we're all set up now, and we're doing the supplies from above. So we've got four objectives: one, two, uh, three, and four. Most of which are over sort of this two thirds of the board. So this area of the battlefield is a little bit, a um, little bit blank, but that's okay. You know, uh, the Marines can uh, hopefully bring to bear their superior quality over the orcs' quantity on a narrower front. Um, Sam on the roll-off to go first, and as you can see the majority of his army is clustered around his big mech there, uh, with the first field, um, so it's all, hopefully, uh, his plan is to keep it all in his buff aura. Uh, because they're older orc models, they're on smaller bases, which makes it easier for him to do that. Loot is over there, Weird Boy is in the truck, um, and uh, yeah, there's a second truck over there, and then Scrap Jets to the flank, Rots at the front screaming, and off to the sides and at the back, I'm assuming to grab objectives and or uh, counter deep strikes as the rest of the while moves forward. Um, built my battle line around my characters, so I've got our captain, chap, um, apothecary, lieutenant, and um, ancient there. Slightly longer range on his uh, flag's aura because of um, uh, yeah, the relic version of it. Librarians down here, and we've got the two squads of intercessors fairly far place. forward with the um, Hellblasters combat squadron into two squads oh, further back. Dreadnought here to benefit from the captain and lieutenant's auras. Yeah, the Delta over here because it's, you know, it's uh, not as crucial, although it would certainly help, they can't kind have of everyone in the aura, and uh, he can uh, start to move down that flank. Plus, if I want to do wisdom of the ancients on, on uh, wisdom of the ancients on him it can benefit the devastators there so they can get the rerolls to hit and then my storm talent on the flank in reserves i've got my uh, my interceptors as well so uh, yeah at the moment sam's going first but we are going to try and seize this for the emperor huh. oh Sorry. yes <laughs> sides have seized here we go with space marine turn one so yeah, Season the Initiative has been a big boost to the Space Marines there. Um, the objectives didn't really move much, um, although they could have moved at the start of the turn. Only the one over there moved, moved further back into his gun line. Um, so it was just a case of, uh, yeah, trying to thin out this orc horde before the lines clash. Um, scouts stayed still in there. I think I may have forgot to mention them in deployment, they obviously snuck into that building. Uh, this tactical squad moved forward, uh, but I played the... Um, steady advance stratagem on them so they could uh, still um, rapid foot count as um, moving as stationary for the purposes of um, bolter discipline. Um, Hellblasters and characters stepped up as well but I kept this squad stationary as I did the Dreadnought and Devastators. Redemptor moved forward and the um, uh, Storm Talon pushed up the flank. Started off with the scouts, just clearing off a few blocks. Oh, my librarian cast the uh, Might of Heroes onto the Redemptor, so that's now a little bit harder to kill. And then, yeah, we went straight into shooting, so the scouts cleared off a few blocks, and then the uh, this 10 man intercessor, intercessor squad, sorry, intercessor squad fired at the nearest mob of boys and went rapid fire on that so I spent 3 CP on that squad this turn but it meant they had 40 shots because of bolter discipline and rapid fire um, re-rolling ones to hit and ones to wound and even after he used grot shields they cleared out the rest of the grot mob and took put 11 wounds, 11 kills onto the boys even with the custom force field from the big mech so uh, that was good but I didn't want to bring them down below 15 because Sam's smart and he'll just respawn them he knows how to play orcs far too well um, Venerable Dreadnought fired at the truck containing the tank busters and blew that up um, actually didn't even get to fire the missiles, the LAS cannons did it alone, a little bit lucky there, but hey, that happens. Um, Hellblasters put some wounds onto that truck, but I forgot to, over, uh, not truck, and um, scrap jet, I forgot to overcharge them, so that was uh, a little bit of a nuisance. Um, but, you know, it's a few wounds there. And then this tactical squad, uh, intercessor squad, thinned out some more of the boys. Over here, the... Um, Redemptor Dreadnought used, um, oh, what's 
that one, the vehicle advancing one. Um, big guns never tire to counter stationary, and then it can fire its heavy weapons at full BS and wiped out the looters in there, which I'm very pleased about because they are they are deadly. I know what they can do to Primaris Marines. Um, and then the Storm Talon and Devastators. To be honest, it was mostly the Storm Talon. The Devastators really fluffed the shots, wiped out all bar one of the Tank Busters. So yeah, a pretty good start to the turn, actually. We've uh, cleared out a good chunk of his boys. There's still some big mobs there, but we've taken out some of his hardest hitting anti marine units and started to get forward. We're uh, on that objective there. That one's going to be, I think, a big battle ground. This one, the Dreadnought and Intercessors should have that cover to grab in a little bit. But uh, yeah, good turn and uh, yeah, Marines seem to be working now. But let's see how the Orcs can strike back in Orc Turn 1. Alrighty, so we're uh, all turn one and they hit back hard. So two boys mobs advanced here, as did the tank busters. That one just scurried up into the building and the scrap jets came forward. Then in the psychic phase, he put the jump on these guys to bring them down here. And he left them just outside of 12 inches from my um, inceptors. So he was denying himself the chance to charge, but to be honest, he didn't want to charge the newest mob. Uh, but it meant I couldn't all spec scan. So yeah, that didn't, uh, that didn't suit me very well, and then his shooting was surprisingly effective. Um, as you can see, the tank busters took down the uh, venerable dreadnought, and the fire from these guys who used Daka Daka, oh, sorry, more Daka, and showing off, killed four out of my five um, hellblasters from this squad, and um, three of the intercessors from there. Um, other than that, these guys were a little bit out of range, didn't do a lot, but the scrap jets did manage to um, contribute to the death of the Venerable Dreadnought as well as killing off the scouts. And over here, the big mech um, used his fire twice stratagem and his souped up shocker to do 12 out of the 13 wounds to the Redemptor. So, yeah, that's in a bad way now. So, pretty hard first strike there. And then in the assault phase, he got both of these scrap jets into my intercessor squad. Tried to use the Ultramarine defensive focus stratagem, but it did nothing. Despite the presence of Hellblasters and a second squad of intercessors in range, really didn't do a lot. Um, and it wasn't that I wasn't wounding them, it was I wasn't hitting them. So maybe that stratagem's not quite all it's cranked up to be, uh, unless you've got flamers or something that although hits in assault. So yeah, um, not great. And then as you can see in combat, they cut down a good number of them. And my banner of the Emperor Ascendant is just not working today. I think out of what, four Hellblasters and seven Intercessors that went down, I got one dude firing again. I did kill a couple of orcs from that mob, but uh, yeah, really not, uh, not what we wanted there. Um, and yeah, if my librarian getting Fury of the Ancients off, as sorry, Might of Heroes off on that Dreadnought didn't really help it much because he got a 9 for his strength and the shock attack gun. So yeah, pretty solid turn for the orcs. Um, going to have to shimmy objectives around in a minute, but it looks like he'll be scoring that one and that one that's right under his truck. I'll be getting that one because I won't be fleeing thanks to the banner. And that one, if it moves, I might score it. But uh, other than that, both got first strikes. So uh, yeah, solid first turn. So uh, turn started with um, some minor jigging around of the objectives. This one came back into my deployment zone a little bit. That one went forward a little bit, meaning my dreadnought was going to struggle to get to it. Uh, that one shot across the <coughs> into his, and that one stayed where it was. Um, the big action of the movement phase was pulling this um, Inceptor squad out of combat, stepping up these Hellblasters and the Captain, plus this squad, because we're in tactical doctrine now, so as of Marine successes, they count as standing still even if they move for the purpose of the discipline. Um, and then these boys over here turned up my Inceptors and stormed. Talon continued up down the flank there. So uh, yeah, um, psychic phase, I put Might of Heroes onto my captain and then failed to cast Smite. And shooting phase, uh, led off with rapid fire with this squad here, so they put out um, an impressive number of shots into the boys there, but as you can see they're still alive. Um, the big mech had a great turn of save to that custom force field. So despite um, the Storm Talon, these Inceptors and the Dread Redemptor Dreadnought all fire into that mob really didn't do a lot. 
Coal Blasters killed the truck those Tank Blasters were in, and they lost a few to fire from... Uh, oh, that was the Devastators that went for them, I think, only killed a few though. Frag Missiles don't seem to be working for me today. Um, and this one surviving Coal Blaster here from the other squad shot the um, uh, first scrap jet. The second scrap jet was dealt with in combat by my captain. And these Inceptors and those Intercessors cleared out the majority of these boys. So, uh, when it comes to leaderships though, um, I didn't manage to break any of these squads. He spent two CP to hold these guys, leads him with three left, meaning he is going to almost certainly be doing unstoppable green tide this turn. These guys haven't suffered enough casualties, and neither have either of these squads, so haven't broken a unit yet, but uh, we do have an unstoppable green tide about to turn up on us, so uh, yeah, tough times, weight of numbers is really uh, helping us out here, despite the Marines' reputed ability to deal with them. Um, but yeah, um, oh, start my turn I did score one um, victory point for holding that objective, but um, Sam's going to get two at the start of his for that one and that one. So here we go with Orc turn two. So as I predicted, the Orcs did unstoppable green tide to start their turn, and as you can see, this big mob of shooter boys has turned up right behind my lines. And despite being just over nine inches out, wasn't able to all spec scan because I've been forgetting my CP farming from um, my warlord. So uh, yeah, I didn't actually have enough CP to do that. I worked it out if I had CP farmed, I would have been able to do it. But hey, you live and learn. You learn from your mistakes. So you know, it's all good. Um, psychic phase. His weird boy managed to put three mortal wounds onto my flyer, so that was handy for him. And as you can see in the movement phase, these boys have surged forward again, leaving just the bots and characters back to guard that objective, because uh, he knows it's rather tricky for me to get over there right now. Um, and shooting is where the damage was done. Um, the tank busters had a really good volley against the um, Inceptors and killed three of them. So that, that's big. If we weren't Ultramarines, there was almost a chance we could have fled there. Uh, down here, these guys didn't do quite so well. Um, put a wound on the Hellblaster from that squad and killed two from there. These two mods killed a couple from here. Combination of some pretty lackluster rolls from the Orcs and some good saves from the Marines. Really uh, saved my butt a few times there. The Grotz did manage to put a wound onto the Storm Talon, but it was saved. And um, yeah, uh, my banner was just completely failing me. Not only is, I, is he a primary ascension I've paid nearly seven points for, he's also got a relic, and he has gotten one extra shot this game. It's uh, definitely getting dropped if he continues performance like that. Uh, these boys then attempted to charge, hoping they could do more damage that way. But unfortunately, he rolled an eight even after rerolls. So. Uh, yeah, he's out of CP, um, and so although the Orcs have got the upper hand on points, I think, um, we're now in a position to really make this a co. But uh, hey, it's not over yet, there's, uh, there's still stuff to do. Oh, and the Dreadnought, he tried to kill that a couple of times with both the, um, um, the uh, shock attack gun and the big mechs um, thing, and that um, boy over there. But every single time he either missed or rolled a lucky six to save, that uh, Dreadnought's only on one wound, it won't be doing a lot, but he's staying alive. Uh, which is ironic for a Dreadnought. And so uh, yeah, here we go with, oh, oh, and start of Space Marine turn, I score one objective. Um, and they move think, first. Oh yeah, we've got to move them first, so I might not score that one, we'll see. Yep, so uh, this is got to move back, but we still score it. This one moved back to guarantee that I score it, um, and the two on his side stuck around. So, uh, yeah, still pretty close on points. Um, we're going to need to uh, try to uh, clear these guys out of here to maximise my chances of uh, not giving away things like line breaker. So I had to be very careful with where I allocated my units this turn because I had threats in front of me and behind. I didn't want to waste <coughs> too much time dealing with these guys behind and sacrifice pushing forward. So I pulled back just my sort of supporter units, so the four inter intercessors, the one surviving Hellblaster who'd been healed up by the Apothecary, um, the Lieutenant, the Banner, um, and the Inceptors, all the sort of stuff that wasn't in big mobs, a big unit, sorry, pulled them back to deal with these guys while pushing this squad forward onto the objective there. 
and Captain Hellblast just went forward to engage those units. Flyer carried on its strafing run down the back line. Um, Psychic Phase saw my librarian put um, my heroes. It was originally only for my captain, realising he was out of range, so we did it on this plasma gunner instead, the uh, Hellblaster. Um, not going to do a lot, but it was, you know, put it on something, it might, you know, matter if he gets targeted later. Um, and then smited to kill a couple of orcs from this mob. Then in the shooting phase, like I said, I had to be very careful with how I allocated my shooting. So basically, this stuff down here killed them. It didn't do enough damage. Um, so I then had to use this big squad here, who also benefited from the Sons of Gulliman ability this turn, as well as um, the Tactical Doctrine. And they took a big chunk out of these guys. It left them with 11 dudes left, and as you can see, they ran away. They are no longer. They only just ran away, though. He needed. Um, a five two for the middle to run and that's what he rolled so yeah that, that worked out pretty well um, Devastators had contributed to that as well and the Storm Talon um, the Captain and those Hellblasters and the Dreadnought uh, went for the stuff over here killed a few of the Grots, a few of the boys a few of the tank busters kind of split my shooting a bit too much but I was hoping that the Hellblasters and the Captain would both make it into combat the idea being that Hellblasters could stomp the Grots and Captain could stomp the Tank Busters. But unfortunately, Captain rolled a really bad charge, uh, despite actually being further up the board. Uh, but hey, it is what it is. And uh, the, tank, uh, the Hellblasters killed most of the Grots. They had some pretty good saves, so they didn't all die. Um, so that's going to mean, unfortunately, I don't get to claim that objective, and he's still scoring that this turn. But uh, hey, you know, things are things are not going bad, and most of his big threats are either gone or at least less of a threat than they were. All right, so this turn the orcs really pushed up and uh, tried to make a mess of my lines. So these boys have come forward, um, as did these boys. Tech busters came around to threaten my captain. War bosses up behind them. At least I don't have what's around here to worry about now. But obviously we've still got some things there camping that objective, which I don't see a way of stopping. Uh, psychic phase, weird boy put another milk wound onto my Storm Talon. Uh, I think he's just trying to psychically bring that down, but he won't be in range next turn, so yeah, we'll be alright. Um, and then he shot up these boys here with this mob, um, and also with the, um, the big mechs. Uh, well, and this got yeah, the big mech fired them as well, killed a good number of them, even just four left when the charge came in. Yeah. And over here, he um, had some pretty bad luck to be honest, did a single wound to my captain and failed to do much of any note to the Hellblasters. Uh, the big mech went for the um, intercessors, uh, sorry, interceptors with his um, souped up shocker. Uh, only did a couple of wounds though, thanks to some poor hit rolls, and then I managed to save them both. But that one lone tank buster did blow up my Redemptor, so yeah, um, running out of models here and the assault phase things just got worse. He's charged in and killed all by one of the hell blasters there, although I did get retribution by stomping out the grot. I know killing the boy would do more to prevent damage, but I just feel like I want to target the boys with something worthwhile because um, I don't want to waste shooting on the grot, let's just get him down. And over here, the big mate and these guys cut through the last of the intercessors down there. So yeah, we are uh, we're on the back foot a little bit, but I think I've still got enough to clear out both of these two objectives. And points-wise, I'm only a point behind going into this turn. So, bottom of the fourth turn, and yeah, we've really started to, uh, to do some work clearing off the orcs now. So he left himself rather exposed down here, because um, although he killed the target, he had Devastators and this little cluster. Managed to resurrect one of these guys with the chaplain, actually remember, uh, the apothecary, actually remember to use my apothecary. Um, left this guy on that objective and brought everyone else across to take out that mob. Uh, this came back, uh, the Storm Talon came back into the centre of the board to give it good line of sight against everything it wanted. And I brought the Captain and Intercessors up here to uh, deal with them. And yeah, it all went rather well. Librarian cast Might of Heroes in himself, uh, and I had moved into Assault Doctrine this turn. And then all of this down here opened up on those boys. Um, killed the Big Mech actually with a combination of Smite and Volta Fire. And then it was really the Storm Talon that, that can shock the boys. Oh, just one amendment from last turn. 
these guys weren't shot by the um, the big mech, they were shot by the tank busters. The big mech had shot some of the intercessors down here. Um, so that basically cleared them out down to just one orc. Um, so decided the devastators would be better used um, firing at the rocks over there and cleared them off. So uh, yeah, well, he had a couple left that they ran to all the ships, so that's uh, them dealt with. And then down here, my captain killed the war boss in combat, and the intercessors um, killed a few of the boys. Sorry, interceptors killed a few of the boys, but not enough to make them all run, although a decent number of them did. Uh, this one surviving guy here tried to charge me with my librarian, but failed my charge. Didn't matter because he ran off the board anyway. So, uh, yeah, he is down to just four models now, but he is winning on points still, so uh, yeah. Um, orcs are getting at least two more at the start of this turn, or I'll only get one at the start of mine. So we need to try to get some uh, line breaker and uh, other secondaries. I've got Warlord now, which is nice, um, but he's uh, appearing to be lining up to get Warlord himself. So uh, yeah, let's see how this rolls on. So we're into the fourth turn of the Orcs now, and as you can see, not a great deal has happened, although he has dealt with the captain, uh, brought a shock attack gun and weird boy into range, a combination of smite and the souped up shocker, so uh, yeah, that's uh, my, my captain gone, which is a shame, he's now got more board, but um, I've uh, still got plenty on the board. In this uh, result of combat down here, the last of the boys did, so he's now down to just two models. Um, points wise he is still in the lead, but hopefully we should be able to change that very soon. Alright then, so end of five, oh end of space marine turn five, and I have managed to wipe him out, but I only scored a single point, um, and I've got line breaker now as well. So it's not over yet, we're on 8-8, eight, eight. so uh, basically move these guys up to this one, pull these guys back to there. Uh, ran the Inceptors into his point zone to get the line breaker and stepped up him to there, uh, the uh, last um, plasma dude. Um, killed the two characters at the back of long range shooting from the Devastators and the Storm Tower. It's 8-8, eight, eight. so start of his turn, um, part of his five he does nothing, end of his five, get to roll to see if the game carries on. Uh, yeah, Six, game carries on, so we score three points, uh, bringing the score to 11 to, uh, 11 to 8, so it's a space win win. Good game, mate. Alrighty, so uh, that went pretty well, didn't it? Uh, victory for the Space Marines. So uh, yeah, nice to see that the new Codex is finally bringing Marines back to being an army that's able to compete. Um, too early to say whether they're busted or OP yet, but they're certainly, uh, you know, an army that's finally able to compete again. And so lovely to pick up a win there. Now, there were some uh, some things I would say really contributed to the win that weren't necessarily as a result of me or really of the new codex. Um, three things really I picked out. Um, firstly, season initiative made a massive difference. It meant I could take those looters off the board entirely on the first turn because um, looters are a real threat to marines so uh, that that was a big deal secondly the matchup um, orcs i think are a relatively straightforward opponent for the new marine book because orcs tend to field a lot of infantry and marines one of their real strengths now with bolter drill is being able to cut through a lot of infantry so uh, you know the matchup was certainly in my favor um, and finally, the fact that we did play it out to the full length. A lot of times in tournaments, especially when Orcs are involved, the time limit means you only get to turn three or four. And at that point, I was behind. It was only because we went to the full six turns uh, that it ran for naturally that I was able to pull out the win there. So, uh, yeah, um, not sort of conclusive. Marines are amazing, but certainly solid. And you've got to bear in mind that was a thrown together. This is what I've what I currently have in my basic collection of Scythes of the Emperor versus um, what was a variation on Sam's tournament winning, um, Ultimate Commander 2019 winning, Orc Evil's uh, Bad Moons list. So yeah, really good there. Um, first turn with that seize and the range that we had, we're able to pull off a bit of an alpha strike there. And like I say, clearing those looters was massive. But then the next couple of turns, it certainly wasn't going all my way. He was able to uh, really crowd me off the objectives and pull off the lead on points and do some significant damage. Um, but then in the end, the Marines just had the resilience to uh, to deal with the Orcs and eventually clear them off the table. So, yeah, um, good times. Um, 
the, uh, the Storm Talon definitely did well, certainly thinking of running that again or uh, maybe even painting up the second one I've got. Um, I bought a pair of them second hand off Sam um, over a year ago now and like I say only got one painted up, might do the other one because that did well. Um, but then it can't really capture objectives which is, uh, you know, could be an issue. The infantry did very well, they were just very reliable intercessors. They're tough to take down, they um, they got good firepower and they can actually, you know, go toe to toe with decent melee forces now. First round of combat they're having three attacks, so uh, that that's useful. Um, I think the big loser for me was the, the banner. Stanton the Emperor Ascendant virtually did nothing for me or game. Now part of that was down to sheer bad luck, but it just doesn't seem like an overly reliable um, thing to include. So he might be getting switched out and I'll have to find something else to do with my relic. Um, after the game did realise there was a couple of stratagems I could have uh, got a bit more use out of. Uh, one in particular that comes to mind is um, only in death does duty end um, and that is the one where you, I think that's what it's called, and that is um, where you can halve the damage done to your dreadnought for a turn. That could have uh, saved the Redemptor from some serious harm early on and have allowed it to contribute a bit more as the game went on, but you know, it didn't do a bad job. Um, so yeah, really pleased to see that Marines are uh, are back as an army you can use in a competitive game. Um, like I say, that wasn't the most competitive list by any stretch. So, uh, yeah, with some refinement and some practice, you know, you could have a really strong army there. Um, and, uh, yeah, nice to see that the Scythes um, are one of the armies that are going to benefit a lot because Ultramarines has come out as a really strong supplement. So even though I can't use everything from there because I'm a successor, um, some of the uh, the key things in there, like the um, uh, Science of Gulliman and the ability to counter standing still when you're using Tactical Doctrine is brilliant. So, uh, yeah, expect to see the, um, the Scythes, maybe not straight away. I'm going to refine the list a bit more before I uh, get them out again, but certainly an army to be uh, doing something with in the near future. Um, as for Sam's Orcs, they ha they certainly had some bad luck there. It's, it's a solid list. Um, let's say he won Ultimate Commander with a variation of that that had, um, uh, what were they called, mech guns in place of the looters, but otherwise was pretty uh, pretty good. So Sam knows what he's doing with that army, which uh, really shows you know, what this new marine book is about. Um, against a different list, something perhaps with a lot of um, ranged anti-medium infantry, so um, something like uh, a very shooty Tyranid list, uh, which is what I played later in the day actually. Sam played uh, his Nid list against me of so many warriors and that it didn't hold up so well and I think I'd struggle against knights as well. Um, those sort of things, either armies that can take out all your infantry unless you've got a way to protect them or something with a lot of heavy armour. Those are going to be the two stumbling blocks for marines I think. Um, so it is early days and I'm sure there are ways we can overcome some of those problems but uh, yeah I think uh, a light infantry list marines can deal with it's going to be the heavier stuff uh, that's going to worry us and um, yeah so uh, that's a bit I'm a bit rambling now but thanks a lot for watching and hopefully I'll see you guys again soon bye